Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this wonderful Wednesday. Such a nice day. It's great that it's almost the end of the week. I know we shouldn't be um, wishing our lives away, but gee, it is nice that we've almost through the work week and then we've just got the weekend to looking forward to it. Okay, so last lesson we were doing functions, okay? And we got as far as sketching hyperbolas. And what we did was we sketched the 2x plus 1 hyperbola. And I'm just showing you this to remind you what we did because our next one is going to be 2 over x minus 1. So do you remember that what happened was that all it did was it moved the graph up. It moved the graph up. And you can see here in my horrible handwriting that it had a new asymptote because, and it was at one. So what happened was that normally the graph would have been like this and would have been like this. And the asymptotes would have been the x-axis and the y-axis, but and then the graphs would not cut the x-axis or the y-axis, right? But now, because we've moved this a plus one, we've actually moved all the values up by one. And you can think of it this way. We find what the original y value was, and then we add one, and that will give us what the new y value is, okay? And that's what's happened. So we've got a new asymptote at y equals one. Okay, now we're going to do two over x minus one. And what I'd like to suggest to you is that I'm hoping that in your head, you'll think, oh, I know what that's gonna do, okay? I'm hoping that you realize that if two x plus one moves the graph up, what do you think 2x minus 1 is going to do? I'm hoping you realize that it's probably going to move the graph down, down. But let's not do the thing. Let's do the exercise. Let's plot the points. Let's prove it to ourselves. Make sure we know. So we've got 2 over minus 4 minus 1. So it's going to be 2 over minus 4 minus 1, which is minus a half minus 1, which is minus 1 and a half. Okay, so it's minus 1 and a half. And I know you can write that as minus 3 over 2, and you're welcome to. It's just that my graph is in whole numbers. So it's easier for me to find where minus 1 and a half is than to find minus 3 over 2. But I'm very happy for you guys to write minus 3 over 2. Okay, then we've got minus 2. So where we see the x, we're substituting minus 2 in. So we can write it over here. We can go, well, 2 over minus 2 minus 1. 2 divided by minus 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 is minus 2. So when x is minus 2, y is minus 2. When x is minus 1, y is 2 divided by minus 1, okay, minus 1, minus 1, which is 2 divided by minus 1 is going to be minus 2 minus 1, which is minus 3. So therefore, this is minus 3. If x is 0, do you agree that that doesn't exist? And now we have a minus 1. Okay, and remember what was special about this last time. When we did it last time, do you realize that when we had that which was special, it actually was the asymptote, okay? Similarly, yeah, this is going to be the asymptote, but we'll prove it to you. Okay, when x is 1. When x is 1, you've got y is equal to 2 divided by 1 minus 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2 minus 1 is just 1. Okay, when x is 2, y is going to be 2 divided by 2 minus 1, which is 1 minus 1, which equals 0. So that's 0. And when x is 4, you've got y equals 2 over 4 minus 1, which is a half minus 1, which is minus a half. So that's minus a half. Okay. And obviously, you guys don't have to write down all these equations and everything. If you can do this in your head and you get it accurately, that's fine. If you want to use a calculator instead, that's fine too. I don't mind as long as you get your values out, okay? So what are we saying? When x is minus 4, y is minus 1 and a half. Okay, that's the first point. Ding, ding. When x is minus 2, y is minus 2. Ding, ding. When x is minus 1, y is minus 3. Excellent. So do you see it's got that beautiful shape? So those are happy. Okay. Now it says when x is naught, y is minus 1. Okay, fair enough. Then it says when x is 1, y is 1. Okay. 
when x is 2, y is 0, and when x is 4, y is minus a half. Okay, so there's your other half of your graph. Remember always that your hyperbolas come in two halves, okay, they get two halves, unless they tell you to only draw for x is bigger than 0 or for y is bigger than 0 or whatever, okay. So do you see that this here is our new asymptote, okay. There is still the original y-axis asymptote, that still stands, okay, but do you see that the x, what was used to be the x-axis, has now moved down for the, to the value of y is equal to minus 1. That is the new asymptote. So if I had to write my domain, the domain is going to stay the same because the domain is how far it stretches across the x-axis, okay? So do you agree it's x is an element of real numbers, but just that x cannot equal 0, cannot equal 0. Where is the range? Now we've got y is an element of real numbers, but this time y cannot equal minus 1 because that is an asymptote. Okay, so do you see what we're doing? We've got your normal hyperbola, we've either moved it up or we move it down by adding or subtracting from the whole value. Okay, so let's talk about this. We've got the standard forms. Okay, y is equal to a over x plus q. We remember a is basically the same as in your parabolas and all your other things where it just tells you the width of the um, hyperbola. So if a is greater than 0, in other words, you're going to be in the quadrants 1 and 3 because they're positive, okay? Remember I showed you the, way, the reason for that was that x is positive and y is positive, which means all the points have to be positive, or x is negative and y is negative, and a minus times a minus is a plus. Okay, so therefore, quadrants A, 1 and 3 are positive. If the Q is greater than 0, it's shifted up, and if Q is smaller than 0, it's shifted down. Makes sense, right? If a is smaller than 0, then it's in quadrants 2 and 4. And again, it's because of the opposite signs of the x and y axis. Yeah, the x axis is negative and the y axis is positive, or vice versa. Yeah, the x axis is positive and the y axis is negative. So there you go, you can see from there your quadrants. Okay, now let's do another example. We got xy equals 16. Okay, so do you agree I could write that as y is 16 over x? So do you agree that that's definitely in hyperbola? And because this is a positive value in front of this, is just 16 over x, we know it's going to be in which quadrants? We know it's going to be in the first quadrant and the third quadrant, okay? Now the best way to draw these is to draw a table. So you're going to do x and you're going to do y. And we're going to plot into this graph here, I mean that equation. Okay, so here we go. I'm just randomly putting out things. And I would always go uh, minus 4, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 4. We don't have to, I'm just giving you my example. And I always choose numbers, obviously factors of whatever that number is. So 16, it's obviously going to be 4, 2, 1, and then 1, 2, 4. I wouldn't choose 3 because I'm going to end up with a weird number here. Okay. So if x is minus 4, do you agree that y is minus 4 as well? Because a minus times minus is a plus, and 4 times 4 is 16. If x is minus 2, y is going to be 16 divided by minus 2, which is minus 8. If x is minus 1, we've got 16 divided by minus 1, which is minus 16. If x is 0, it's not applicable. So we know, therefore, that this is an asymptote, which we knew anyway. We know from this that there's no plus and minuses here. So therefore, the y-axis is definitely an asymptote, and the x-axis is definitely an asymptote, okay? Then, if x is 1, y is 16. If x is 2, y is going to be 8. If x is 4, y is going to be 4. Okay, so let's plot, plot these down. If x is minus 4, y is minus 4. So to check this, here we go. If x is minus 2, y is minus 8. 
if x is minus 1, y is minus 16. Okay, so it does something like that. And obviously, I could have chosen an 8 here to make it easier for me to see. Similarly, if x is 1, y is 16, it's up there somewhere. If x is 2, y is 8. And if x is 4, y is 4. And if you just want to prove it to yourself, if x is 2, no, yeah, if x, if y is, I mean, if x is 8, y is 2. So therefore, it's going to be like this. And the graph is going to look like that. Guys, I was a bit lazy. I plotted three points here and three points here because I knew that that was an asymptote. And three points is great, except it could be a straight line. So what I would suggest to you guys is always do at least four points, but I was lazy. I knew this was a hyperbola, so that's why I did three points on either side. But please, if you have any doubts about the shape, more points the merrier. It really doesn't make a difference. You could put in x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 4, x equals 8, x equals 16. All of those are nice, easy factors. All the factors are 16, in fact, you can put in. Okay, so your domain. Your domain is, remember, your x value. So it's going to be x is an element of real values for x does not equal 0, because that's the asymptote. And similarly, it's your range. You've got y is an element of real values for y does not equal 0. And why is that? Because your asymptotes are the x-axis and the y-axis. OK, let's now look at the exponential graph. Yay! So the exponential equation is y is equal to a to the x. y is equal to a to the x, OK? So again, Honestly, the only way and the best way that I know of helping you guys to get a grips of different graphs like the hyperbola and the exponential graphs and everything is to plot different graphs with these different values, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to substitute these numbers in to a half to the power of x, 2 to the power of x, and 3 to the power of x, and then see what we get. Okay, but what I want you to realize is that half to the power of x equals what? Do you agree that that is the same as 2 to the negative 1 to the x, which is 2 to the negative x? Because if you've got anything as a fraction, you can write it as 2 to the negative 1. And then what do you do if you've got a bracket between your two exponents? You can multiply across them and it becomes 2 to the negative x. So this is the same as 2 to the negative x, okay? But if I had to plot minus 2n, it becomes 2 to the minus minus 2. Okay, you agree? Minus times a minus is a plus. It becomes 2 squared, which is 4. So this first answer here is 4. Do you get it? If x is minus 1, you've got 2 to the minus minus 1, which is 2 to the 1, which is just 2. Anything to the naught is 1. Okay? 2 to the minus 1 well, 2 to the minus 1 is just going to be a half. And what is 2 to the minus 2? Well, let's think about that. 2 to the minus 2 is the same as 1 over 2 squared, which is a quarter. Da -da, so that's a quarter. Okay, so do you agree that we can plot this first one? So let's plot it. Okay, when x is minus 2, y is 4. Okay, when x is, and by the way, I'm using crosses because when I do this, my stupid board does that. Okay, and I can't seem to change it. I've tried. Okay, um, so I'm putting crosses. You guys are welcome to use dots. The only thing about a dot is you have to obviously make sure you can see it. Okay, so you're welcome to use dots or crosses. The crosses are fine as well, as long as they're not like that. That's horrible. Okay, it must be a nice, neat little cross. So you're just showing where cross, crosses. Okay, when x is minus 1, y is, oh, now it's changed. Hang on, there we go. If x is minus 1, y is 2. If x is 0, y is 1. If x is 1, y is a half. And when x is 2, y is a quarter. Whee, it's very small. Okay, so this graph goes like that. Okay. Let's see what happens with 2 to the x. Okay, so I'm going to change colors. So 2 to the x becomes 2 to the minus 2. 2 to the minus 2. And do you agree that 2 to the minus 2, what did we say it was? We said it was a quarter. So that's a quarter. 2 to the minus 1 is a half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. 
and 2 to the 2 is 4. So do you agree that this, these two are actually mirror images over here, the watch, I'll show you. This here, when x is minus 2, y is a quarter. When x is minus 1, y is a half. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. And when x is 2, y is 4. Look at that, they are mirror images across the y-axis, okay? And note though that they both remain positive above the x-axis, okay? So we can guess, we can prove it to you just now, but we can guess that this is an asymptote, okay? That y equals naught is an asymptote at the x-axis. Now let's try this 3 to the x. So we proved that these two are mirror images of each other, okay? So 2 to the negative x and 2 to the x are mirror images of each other across the y-axis, across the y-axis, okay? But now what would happen if we change the base to 3 to the x? So let's have a look. Do you agree that becomes 3 to the negative 2? which becomes 1 over 3 squared, which equals 1 ninth. Actually, I'm going to do this in a different color so you can see it better. So let's do this. So that's 1 ninth, right? 2 to the negative 1, I mean 3 to the negative 1 is going to be a third. 3 to the naught is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Okay, so now let's plot this. Okay, so when x is minus 2, y is a ninth. It's ridiculously small. When x is minus 1, it's a third. It still goes through 0. When x is 1, y is 3. And when x is 2, y is 9. So do you agree that if we change the base, the bigger the base, the steeper the exponent. Okay, look at that. It's way steeper than the red graph. So for this, we can say the bigger the base, the steeper the graph. Or if you want, you can say that the graph, the gradient is, the gradient is larger, if you want to say that, or bigger, or whatever. Okay, so let's think about this for a minute. If we have 2 to the x, do you agree that we said 2 to the minus 2 was a quarter? Okay, what is 2 to the minus 3? It is an eighth. 2 to the minus 4 is 1 over 2 to the 16. Actually, no, it's 32. No, it's 16. Okay, right. So the point is that do you see that this number gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but never gets to zero? Okay. Same with this. Okay, so do you see that we can definitely say that this is an asymptote? So what can we say the domain and range of all of these? All of these have got the same domain. The domain is an x is an element of real values. That's it. Or you could write it as x is smaller than infinity and bigger than minus infinity. Let's talk about range. Range, y is going to be an element of real values for y is greater than zero, okay? It exists for all the values larger than the, above the x-axis. Or you could write it as y is smaller than infinity and greater than zero, okay? Right, excellent. Now let's talk about what had happened if we again added plus minus. And I've included the two to x because it's always nice to see what happens compared to the standard one. So I'm gonna do the standard one in black. Okay, so we know that two to the minus two is a quarter. Two to the minus one is a half. Two to the naught is one. Two to the one is two and two to the two is four. So if we plot that, we've got minus a quarter, minus a half, one, um, x is 1, y is 2, and 4. So that's my standard graph. Okay, that is my 2 to the x. Okay. Now let's see what happens if I go 2 to the x plus 1. What is going to happen? Do you agree that that is 2 to the x, right? But now, so this is the value of 2 to the x, but now I'm adding 1. So this is going to be a quarter plus 1, which is 1 and a quarter. This is going to be a half plus one, so it's going to be one and a half. 
this is going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 3 plus 1 is 4. So it's pretty obvious. I mean, 4 plus 1 is 5. So it's pretty obvious what is happening, but let's just draw it anyway. So when x is minus 2, y is 1 and a quarter. When x is minus 2, y is 1 and a quarter. When x is minus 1, y is 1 and a half. Then it's going to be 2. Then when x is 1, y is 3. And when x is 2, y is 5. So do you see that this graph is really just been shifted up? That's all that's happened is it's been shifted up. So what does this do? It shifts the graph up. It shifts the graph up, which means that I'm hoping that you guys will automatically see that if it's minus one, it's going to shift the graph down. Okay, so two to the x minus one is going to shift it down, which means we're looking at the original here. It's a quarter. A quarter minus one is going to be minus three quarters. A half minus one is minus a half. One minus one is zero. Two minus one is one. And four minus one is three. So let's plot that. It's now when x is two, y is minus three quarters. So it's kind of there. When x is one, minus one, it's minus a half. Goes through zero, one, and three. Three, x is two, y is three. And there you go. Okay, get it. So this thing here affects the y-axis, the way it trap, I mean the y-shift. It either pushes the graph up or pulls it down. Right, now we need to talk about negative exponential graphs and not, we've already spoken about 2 to the x and we've spoken about 2 to the negative x, right? We know that those are basically e mirror images, images, across the y-axis, okay? Now we need to look at what happens if two things happen. One is what happens if we put a minus in front of that two, and two, what if we multiplied it? So again, let's do our standard graph. So that's going to be minus two. It's going to be two to the minus two is minus, I can't believe I'm struggling with this, as a quarter, <laughs> sorry, a half, one, two, Four. Okay, so it's going to be x is minus 2, y is a quarter, x is minus 1, y is a half, then x is naught, y is 1, x is 1, y is 2, and x is 2, y is 4. So there's my standard graph. Now let's see what happens if I do this. So what happens is wherever I'm now seeing this value, I have to put a minus in front of it. So this becomes minus a quarter, minus a half, minus one, minus two, and minus four. Okay, so when x is minus two, we got minus a quarter. When x is minus one, we've got minus a half. When x is naught, we've got y is minus one. When x is 2, y is, I mean, x is 1, y is minus 2. And when x is 2, y is minus 4. Aha. Uh -huh. So do you see that these two are mirror images across the x-axis? These are mirror images across the x-axis, the x-axis. Okay, now let's see what happens if I multiply the first line by 3. Okay, so I could do these on separate graphs. It's just easier if we're doing it all in one. And I'm going to change this color to be purple. Okay, so whatever we're doing, we're going to take whatever that number is, the 2 to the x, right? And we're going to multiply it by 3. So quarter times by 3 is 3 quarters. 3 times a half is 3 over 2. And 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. 3 times by 1 is 3, 3 times by 2 is 6, and 3 times by 4 is 12. And now you can see why I have this specific graph paper. So when x is minus 2, y is 3 quarters, so it's up there. When x is minus 1, y is 1 and a half, it's up there. When x is 0, y is 3. When x is 1, 
y is 6, and when x is 2, y is going to be 12, which is 10, 11, 12. Sure, so do you agree that a number positive an integer positive integer above this affects the gradient. So that affects the gradient, okay? If it had been a half times two to the x, it would have been down here somewhere, okay? But three makes it much steeper. So the standard form again is y is equal to a to the x plus q, where a is a whole number, it's an increasing function, okay? In other words, it goes up to the right, it goes up to the right. Okay, if a is a fraction, then we say it's a decreasing function, or you could say it's up to the left. Okay, if q is greater than naught, then obviously we're moving it up, and if q is smaller than naught, then we're moving it down. Right, so now let's do a couple of examples. Okay, and I know that we've kind of been talking about this already, but this is the type of question that you might get in your test and exam. So I think let's go through it. Um, it says y equals 2 to the x minus 1, draw the graph and determine the y-intercept, the domain, the range, and the asymptotes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot some points. Okay, and I'm going to go minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. You guys can choose other points. I'm just using these just to make my life easy. Okay, so when x is minus 2, y is going to be 2 to the minus 2 minus 1. 2 to the minus 2 is a quarter, minus 1 is minus 3 quarters. So that's minus 3 quarters, okay? When x is minus 1, we get 2 to the negative 1 minus 1. That's a half minus 1, which is minus a half. When x is naught, we get 1. So 2 to the naught is 1, 1 minus 1 is naught. When x is 1, you get 2 to the 1, minus 1 is 1. And when x is 2, you get 2 to the 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. Okay, so now we can draw the graph, right? So when x is minus 2, y is minus 3 quarters. When x is minus 1, my, y is minus a half. When x is naught, y is naught. When x is 1, y is 1, and when x is 2, y is 3. So do you see that we've got this beautiful exponential graph? And what do you notice? You notice that it's actually shaping out to run almost parallel to this x equals minus, I mean y equals minus 1. So do you agree that this year is your new asymptote, okay? So now the y-intercept is obviously zero. Okay, do you agree with that? So the y-intercept is y equals zero, or you can just say zero, zero, because it is. The domain is gonna be for x is an element of real numbers. It's gonna be from minus infinity all the way up to plus infinity. The range, however, is only gonna be that y is greater than minus one y is greater than minus 1 for y is an element of real values. So anything above that, that's fine. Okay, and the asymptotes are going to be that x, actually there's only one asymptote, I don't know why I'm doing that. The asymptote is going to be the what line? It is going to be this dotted line here, okay, they're not going to cross. So if you look at that, you can see that it is, when if you think about it, if you struggle with these, you can say, okay, well this point here is 1 minus 1, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 1, minus 1 minus 1. So what is constant is a minus 1. So therefore the asymptote is y is equal to minus 1. Okay, now let's do a proper example. This is a typical exam paper question example. Okay, um, and it says sketch below graphs f of x equals a over x plus q and g of x is equal to n times b of x plus t. Okay, so what do we have? Do you agree that this thing here, this thing, is a hyperbola? Right, and this thing here is an exponential. Definitely, okay. 
Now it says the horizontal asymptote of both the graphs is the line y equals plus 1. So now do we agree we already have q? This q value has to be plus 1. Okay, and so does this t value. It has to be plus 1. So we've already got q and t there 1 and 1. Woohoo! Okay, do we agree with that? Now they've got this point here, which is 1 minus 1. That one there. Yeah. And this point here where x is 2, y is naught. Okay. So do you agree? They haven't labeled it, but do you agree? Let's just make sure you that you understand this. That this year, together with this, is the hyperbola. Because remember your hyperbola, there are two of them. Okay. So, so far we've got an equation f of x is equal to a over a x plus 1 because we know it's been moved up by 1 by the simple reason that it cuts the x-axis and the fact that they tell us that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Okay, so now we need to find the rest of the equation. We want a, we need to find a. Okay, so do you agree there's this point here 2 naught? So I'm going to substitute that value into this. Actually, yes, I can. So I'm going to substitute this value here to get a. So it's the point is 2, naught. So when x is 2, y is going to be naught. So let's substitute into this equation. So we've got 0 is a over 2 plus 1. So when I take that across, it becomes minus 1. Minus 1 is equal to a over 2. Therefore, a is going to be minus 2. Aha, yay, it works. How do I know it works? The simple reason, well, one of the best things I know is true about it, is the fact that this is a negative quadrant and that's a negative quadrant. So therefore, my purple is answer for a over here has to be negative. So I'm very happy with that. And the overall equation is going to be f of x is going to be minus 2 over x plus 1. Okay, so that's the f. Now let's look at the next one, which is g of x, g of x. So g of x here is your exponential function, and you'll notice it's going through 0. Okay, so we know that g of x equals nb to the x plus t. And usually your um, exponential graph has an asymptote of the x-axis. The fact that it hasn't means it's been moved up by 1, which is why we can immediately write this as n times b to the x plus 1. Okay. Now we need to solve for n and b, and that is why they've asked us, they've given us two values, the minus 1, 1, and, that, and the 0, 0. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Okay, do you agree that equals y? So now let us substitute in this value here, 1 minus 1. So when x is 1, y equals minus 1. So the minus y is equal to n times b to the 1 plus 1. Okay, so do you agree therefore that we can say minus 2 is equal to n times b? So therefore we're going to call the equation 1. So that's using that point there, the 1 minus 1. We can also use the 0, 0 point, okay? So when x is 0, y is 0. So if we do it over here, we've got 0 is equal to nb to the 0 plus 1, okay? Anything to the 0 is 1, and that x only belongs to the b. So therefore, we've got 0 is equal to n times the 1 plus 1, Okay, therefore minus 1 is equal to n times by 1. So n is equal to minus 1. And again, we're happy because that's obviously a negative exponential graph. So I'm very happy that we've got a negative 1 as the, I mean, yeah, that n is equal to minus 1. <sighs> Let me rewrite that. Minus 1 is equal to n. Okay, so then if I substitute that in to yeah, I've got minus 2 is equal to minus 1 times by b. If I divide both sides by minus 1, divide both by sides by minus 1, you get that b is equal to 2. Cha ching And there we've got a, b, n, q, and t. Phew! Okay, that was a nice question here. 
Right. Now we're going to talk about interpretation of graphs. And what is interpretation of graphs? We've kind of been doing interpretation of graphs in the last examples. So we're going to start off with looking at something like this, where you get given the equation, you get given points on the graph, and you have to determine the equation. So this is a parabola, there's a hyperbola. And then we're going to start talking about interpreting graphs, where we've got two graphs that cross. And then we need to talk about working out things about those two graphs. OK, so let's get going. So they tell us that the general equation of this parabola is y is equal to ax, q, AX squared plus q. y is equal to ax squared plus q. Now, do you agree that there's no middle term? So therefore, I know something shifted left or right, OK? I also know that q moves the graph up or down, and it's where it cuts the y-axis. And I can see immediately where it cuts the y-axis, so that it cuts it at 3. Therefore, I've got y is equal to ax squared plus 3. Excellent. Now, I've got this other point, which goes 1, 1. So, 1, 1 is a point on this graph. 1, 1 is a point on this graph. So, if I substitute x equals 1 and y equals 1 in here, and I solve, I'll be able to get a. So let's do that. So we've got 1 is equal to a times by 1 squared plus 3. So you go 1 minus 3 is equal to a. So a is equal to negative 2. And again, I'm happy because this is obviously a sad parabola, which means my a should be negative. And my final equation is y is equal to minus 2x squared plus 3. And please be careful about that. Be careful that you don't not write down the actual solution. If they ask you to write the equation of the graph and you just write the values of a and q, then you're not actually solving the issue. You actually need to write the equation down if they ask you for it because that's where the mark allocation is, okay? Right, now let's look at this one. Use the sketch below to determine the values of a and q in y is equal to a to the x plus q. Okay, so do you agree this is a hyperbola? Okay, and they want us to put in the values in order to work this out, but isn't it nice that they've given us two values and we've got two variables? Therefore, we can use these two values to work out using simultaneous equations. So let's look at this first line and do you understand that these two are both part of the same graph? Okay, I just don't want to cut the top one in. So if we look at this number first, we're going to substitute it in. We've got naught is equal to a over 1 plus q, okay? So naught equals a plus q, so therefore we can say that a equals minus q or vice versa. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to use that and use this part of the graph with this value. So we're going to go, well, when x is minus 1, y is 2. So you've got 2 is equal to a over minus 1 plus q, right? But we know that a plus q equals naught, or a equals equal to minus q, or that q equals minus a, right? So I'm going to use that, and I'm going to substitute into there, and I'm going to solve for a. So I'm going to say, okay, fine. 2 is equal to a over minus 1, and then q is equal to minus a, so it's minus a. So do you agree that that becomes 2 is equal to minus a minus a, so 2 is equal to minus 2a, so therefore a is equal to minus 1. And a is equal to negative q, or q is equal to negative a, therefore q is going to equal to 1. So therefore we can substitute in, we can write, now we have to write it in that form, it becomes y is equal to the a is minus 1. So it's minus 1 over x, and the q is 1 plus 1. And we're happy with the fact that it's a positive value. You should expect it to be a positive value because this is above the x-axis. So grade 10, if you're doing a parabola and you get that the q is a minus number and you can see that it's been shifted up, then you know that you've made a mistake. Please always, always, always check that your answers make sense. It drives me insane when I mark grade 10 work or grade 11 work, grade 12 work. And they say, that maybe the question reads, how many people will you be able to transport in a bus? 
and they come back with two and three quarter people, really two and three quarter people. Which person are you going to chop into three quarters and then transport them in a bus? OK, it's not like that in maths. So you need to make sure that your answer makes sense. OK, so if you've got that Q equals plus one and you can see from the graph that the graph has moved up, then you're very happy. But if you got the Q is negative, then you did something wrong and you need to go check your work. OK, and on that note, I'm going to leave this question because it's a bit long to do. If you want to, I'm going to leave it up for about 10 seconds. <laughs> um, take a screenshot um, and or just pause it or whatever and then try and do it for yourself. I'll be back with you guys on Monday and we can go through it and see if you got it right. Have a wonderful day.